Hello, we are the approved team. Welcome to this video. We will help you navigate through your compliance section in detail. We also we will also touch base on three other sections such as profile, help and resources. Now, once you receive an invitation from exact or your school admin, you will click on the URL that has been provided to you or the link. Now enter your school email address and your password. If asked or if it's a SSL login, then you need not enter the password. Just use your school email ID and you will be allowed to log into the system. Once you log in, this would be the dashboard from where you can go to all the parts of the system. That you need to use at different times when while you are in the program. Now the first thing on the left hand side of the dashboard will be the announcements that is made from your school. Here is an announcement for approved contact information and it says that your school has signed up for exact. Oh, that your school has signed up for exact proof, which means that our team will be reviewing your documents that you upload. So for any questions related to your document and its status, please email us at approve at exact.com as we would be your first point of contact. We request that in your email address, we request that in your email subject, please include your university name, what program you are with and your class. It is a lot easier and quicker for us to respond back to you if we have this information. For any technical assistant assistance, please use v for support at exact.com. Um, technical assistance such as you are not able to upload a document or you are not able to log in. A very important thing I would like to mention is please email us from your school email address only. As we can only find you via your school email address and not your personal email address. Now I will go over some of these sections briefly. First is your profile section. When you click on the profile tile, it brings you to this page. Now you can upload your picture here by clicking on the edit pencil icon. Also below the picture you will see two tabs. One is academics and one is profile. When you click on the profile tab, it has some information that you need to fill out. This information should be filled in a professional manner because this is your profile that gets shared with your clinical sites. To fill in this information, you will have to click either on the pencil icon or on the plus sign, whichever is available. Now, when you click on the plus sign, a drawer opens up. You can fill in the information. And then hit save. You will be able to make any edits and do not forget to hit save each time. Now, Going back to the dashboard from the hamburger icon on the top left. Next, we will look at the help section. There is a ribbon on the top, which will take, which has a link to the help center. You need to click on the words help center. And then you can click on help for students. Here you will find many instruction guides. To find a specific document, you can type the words in the search box. For example, to find instructions on how to share your profile link with the clinical site, you can you can type share profile and then hit search. And below you would see a document on how to share your profile link with the sites. And all the instruction guides will be a detailed step by step image guide, which is very easy to follow. Now, the next page in the uh, help section, the rest of the page in the help section is going to be uh, a page where you can use this part to send a ticket directly to our support team. Here in the subject, you need to mention what is your ticket regarding to. And then in the question part, you can ask your question. If you have any document that you would like to upload and you would like our team to view that document, then you can upload this document by browsing. By using this browse to upload section. 
on the right hand side of the page you will see all the tickets that you have you would have raised in the entire duration of your program or the entire duration that you're using a proof every single ticket that you would have raised would be visible here along with its status its description when did you create the ticket and when was it updated again going back to dashboard from the hamburger icon now we will have a look brief look at the resources tile so the resources section houses instruction guides videos and other resources the school would like to share with you some of the documents that you will find in your help center you will also find here for example there would be documents such as how to complete your student profile or how to upload the documents in exact you will find the information you will find information here from exact as well as from your school now we will discuss the compliance section in detail by clicking on this compliance tile it will take you to the compliance page. Now this page gets colorful as you start uploading the documents and our team starts reviewing it. I will start by going over the columns briefly. Here is the first column and you would see the list of mandatory requirements and below you would also see the list of optional requirements and then any requirement or any document that is called uploaded by school. So it would be where the school uploads a document on behalf of all the students. Then the second column is category, which indicates the category of the requirement. For example, membership and licensure, health and immunization, certificates and trainings, etc. Then the third column is the status column, which I will explain in a bit. Then the next is the due date column. It would be the due dates that the school has decided for each requirement. Here you will see different due dates for the requirements. As for the purpose of this video, I am using a mock cohort and a mock student, and these are again due dates accordingly. Next would be the expiration date column. So if we are capturing expiration date for any requirement, that would be visible here in this column. Now, if the requirement is going to be shared with the site, it would be marked as in this bold color here. And if any requirement you do not want to share with side or you do not want to include in the profile link, that would be grayed out. Now let's have a look at the status column. The first one is the get started status. When you log in, everything will be in get started status. When you click on get started status, You will see a plus sign here. And on the right hand side, you will also see the guidelines. Now, when you click on the plus sign, a drawer opens up. And you can start filling the information. And while you are on this page, again, you would be able to see the guidelines. Now, for example, we'll take the example of Vericilla. Here in the guidelines, it says that two documented vaccinations or a positive title lab report. So if you want to upload your vaccination records, if you want to upload your vaccination records, then you click on plus sign on the vaccination placeholder. And you can start filling the information. So I'm just choosing some random dates for the purpose of this video. However, when you choose them, you have to Put your exact vaccination dates. And then you need to upload a document. So here I'm uploading a mock document. So you can upload your immunization record profile uh, record file here. And then if the school wants you to uh, update all this and all your immunization information on a school form. In that scenario, a school form would be provided to you under the template section. You just need to click on view documents under the template section and you will be able to download the school form from here, print it, and then you would be able to update all the information and then upload it back from upload files. Now, when you submit for review, 
you will get a message. Are you sure you want to submit from review when you hit OK? Now this document is sub submitted for review and the status changes from get started to pending review. And all your details are been captured here along with the document that you have uploaded gets captured here. Now, once the status has changed to pending review, we took the example of Vericella, the status has changed to pending review, which now means that a proof team needs to review this document for you. And our team reviews the document based on the school guidelines and according to the status and accordingly set the status to either approved, not approved or in progress. Now let's move on to the next status, which is expiring or expired. Now, 30 days prior to the document expiring, the system will automatically turn the status to show expiry. If a document is in approved status, but it's expiring soon, the status will show as expiring. So your document is actually approved, but it is going to expire and thus it has an expiring status. And if you need to make a doctor's appointment, etc., you can go ahead and start the process so that your document doesn't expire. While you are in clinical rotation or. Your placements. Now to upload the document, you need to click on the expiring status. Here on the top, you will see a yellow band which will tell you when the document is going to expire and how you can start uploading your document. All you need to do is. Click on add new record. And again, you will find a plus sign here. Once you click on the plus sign, you will a drawer opens up for you. And then you can enter your details. Similarly, upload your document the way we did in Vericella. And then hit submit review and then click OK. Now, as soon as you hit submit review, the status initially was expiring and now it has changed to pending review, which again tells our team that we need to start. We have to review the documents as per the guidelines. Now the previous document that you had uploaded, which had expired is now saved under archived records. So this is also this document will also be accessible to you. It doesn't get lost. All it does, all it is, uh, it just gets saved under archived records. Now let's talk about the next status, which is in progress. Now, whenever you are in the process of completing the series of vaccination, for example, you have uploaded dose one of MMR. As you can see, only dose one of MMR has been uploaded and you're yet to upload dose two. Our team will keep the document status in progress. And once the status is in progress, we will also enter a follow up date. So here you will see a follow up date. Anytime a document is in progress or is in, in not approved status, we will always add a reason. For example, here the document is in progress and a comment has been mentioned here. Why? It says please upload your second dose when you complete it because the student has already uploaded the first dose and the second dose is remaining. Now, once you upload your second dose, again, you can go on the edit pencil icon. Dose one was uploaded here. After you have taken your second dose, you can upload your dose two. You can upload the document for your dose two. And then hit submit review. Once again, the status now changes to pending review. So this is how you enter. The document and this is how the status then changes to pending review. And then the approved team will review this document for you. Now the next very important status here is. Not approved status, so whenever a document is in not approved status, this is how it will show up. And if you would like to know why it is in not approved status, you just need to click on the not approved status and you would be able to see the reason as to why it is. Here, the document status is in not approved. You also see the due date by when it was due and 
you would see the reason why it is not approved. So here it says back of card is required. <coughs> So it's in this case, you are welcome to go in. Once you now you know the reason why it is in not approved status. So all you have to do is click on the pencil icon and then again upload your document from here and then hit submit button for review. You will consistently get reminders till all the documents are till all the mandatory requirements are in approved status. I would like to add how important it is to follow the guidelines that are on the right side of the screen. Now, for example, here we are on the health insurance requirement. Here the guideline says that upload front and back of the card. If you upload only the front of the card, then the status is not approved because you still need to upload the back of the card. So please follow the guidelines set by your school for quick approvals. If your school is going to be using universal for background check and drug screening, you will find the instruction guides in the template section and you will have to follow the instruction guide and you will be able to request for drug screening or background check. Now this covers the compliance section in detail and we look forward to reviewing your uploaded documents and we wish you all the best during your time at the program. Thank you.